Thank you, Shiva. Well, uh, Urias laid out the table fairly well, and so it makes my life easy. Uh, I just need to give you a picture of the run-up to the process. This, this mass that has come up in terms of 17 goals, 169 targets, and probably anywhere between 300 to 400 indicators that are going to come out. This mass, is it crazy? Is it real? Let me give you a picture. Having been associated with the international negotiations for quite some time, this has been a three-year process since 2012 Rio summit in which there has been a global learning that has taken place and as part of the learning there's also been a negotiation we've been fortunate to actually take the 190 odd negotiators out over the last two years in a series of retreats dealing with different aspects of this so you take them out and say please take off your tie you are no more negotiating Let's differentiate between the science, the policy, the politics. Unfortunately, negotiation is politics. So we say, keep out the politics for a moment. Can we understand the science policy link? So that tomorrow when you go and negotiate, you're negotiating from a position of understanding. So this, and I would say, for my take, it's been an interesting process. And that's why, please don't get clouded in the maze. Let me give you a picture. BMW is sitting here. Let's look at it as a vehicle. Okay, The final outcome of this is like a vehicle. Look at the 17 goals. Half a dozen odd goals is the destination you want to go. End poverty, the destination. Equity, destination. Health for all, destination. So you have half a dozen where it's clear, humanistically, across everybody north or south we shall take this to the des des uh, destination next you come to what is the engine of the vehicle in fact Yuri was speaking earlier to the engine of the vehicle it's primarily industry the economic activities in terms of infrastructure there are seven goals that are primarily economic activities and this is the engine of the vehicle that is going to take us forward glo as a global community over the next 15 years so infrastructure energy infrastructure water infrastructure sustainable consumption and production the, all the economic activities that are going to take us towards that destination now, now that you have the engine, you need fuel inside. This is where the three goals, six plus seven plus three, the three goals of the life support system, basically the environment on climate change, what do you have? You have land, the terrestrial, there's another parallel session which Seema has organized on biodiversity. It's basically the terrestrial ecosystem the ocean ecosystem and finally climate change and air so this is the life support system which is the fuel you don't have the fuel you can't run the engine so it's not a problem between environment and development it's not a problem between the north and south we jolly well learn to do it together and finally you need the 17th goal the driver which is basically what is the means of implementation and what's the kind of partnerships that is required. No single individual group is ever going to be do it by yourself. So it's a simple caricature. Don't get lost in the goals targets. It's simple. Get on with the job. How does it apply in each one of our contexts on a day-to-day -day basis? I'm going to highlight four aspects I'm not getting into the details we'll get into the details during the discussion I just throw it two of which I think Yuri, you have already covered in the earlier session number one which you talked about is capacity across the world 
and in the Indian context even worse. Anywhere between 20 to 50 million people are going to be required with skills to do this. How are we going to manage this collectively is the question. So from the skills, do we have the institutional capability? For example, in the rural context, the base unit is the panchayat. In the urban context is the urban local bodies. How are you and I from different groups or institutions going to learn to work with them in partnership? They don't have capacity, we don't have capacity, and yet we have to sit together at the same table and work. What is the system we are going to put in place? We cannot ask government to do it. We have to take a proactive role with government. So what's the system? So one broad cluster of aspects in terms of capacity. Number two, finance. Yes, sir, it's Indian. And I'll just give you some numbers, rattle off some numbers. In terms of adequacy of money, five to seven trillion US dollars per annum is going to be required for financing this SDG business, if you want to call it. Globally, five to seven trillion. Developing countries, four trillion. Of that developing countries, one trillion is going to be required for my country. India is going to require one trillion. Our gap is 500 billion, which is the equivalent of the budget of the central and state governments today. Our gap per annum. So there is going to be insufficiency, and you very rightly pointed out, thankfully our minister, uh, Ministry of Finance, this reverse cash flows from developing to industrialized countries is crazy. India is taking a lead in fighting it. So the financial issue is one that needs to be tackled, and yet we can do it right in our context at this point of time. Number three, what are the kinds of technology choices we are going to do? I'm not going to get into detail. There are two other colleagues I'm sure will get into the technology aspects. And number four, what is the choices we are going to make in terms of natural resource management? Let me give you an example. Shiva's company. Any fool knows that you can have, you can use one third of the water with drip and sprinkler irrigation. And you've demonstrated it, a lot of NGOs have demonstrated, they've demonstrated it as a company. Now why the hell are our farmers dying there? They can have more crop per drop. Okay, so there are several examples of this nature which I can quote. We'll get into it during the discussions. Thank you.